Hey guys, how's it going? So today Aaron and I are out on the new property planting a few trees. These are technically not the very first trees we've planted out here because I did plant some back there a couple of years ago before we even owned the property and our neighbor said that we could kind of plant up the little area right outside of our fence. So I do have a couple out there. But today we have four red point maples that we're putting in. I'm super excited about it because it's one of my favorite trees. Aaron's digging the hole. <laughs> They're big, you guys. Like, look at this. What size is that? Like 25, I think they say. Let me look. 28 inch, two inch caliper trees. So the red point maple, for some reason, this tree, buying them this big is actually not like insanely expensive. There are some trees that are really expensive to buy this size, but these are really reasonable. Um, so this is typically what I look for, and I was really surprised that the garden center even had four left. So we've got one sitting there, one here, and then Aaron already planted this one right here the other day and has drip run to it and everything. So the reason we're starting with trees along this fence line, like kind of of all areas in this whole property, is that we're having some gravel work done very soon. And we wanted to have the trees in and set so we didn't have to move any gravel out of the way. Um, so that was kind of the goal. This is where we're gonna have people park when we have extra cars here because as we have increased the amount of property we have, the amount of projects we're doing, of course we can't do it all ourselves. So as we have people come in to help us out with this or that, we wanted a nice place for everybody to park with some eventual shade. So the red point maples grow about 45 feet tall by 30 feet wide. Um, and so we'll kind of limb them up so that they kind of create a nice canopy over the cars that'll be here. Um, and they'll also be, we'll limb them up over this lane, of course. This is not a through road. In fact, like we kind of own half the road. It's weird, let me show you. So if I go toward our fence here, you can see that our property just goes right out into the middle of this road. It's not a through road either way, like it stops over there. So the road comes right up to the fence, stops here and then it continues on and really the only reason why this road is here is that there is an access road back here to get it to a pump house for the subdivision that's next to us so this is a good view you can see that we'll just have it lim limbed up so that if anybody needs to come down here of course we'll keep these all maintained and these poles right here you have to imagine them gone because we are having those all buried this fall i cannot wait so red point maples the reason why they're one of my favorite trees is that they seem like i've grown them for quite a few years now and it seems like they color up earlier than all the other maples in our area and they maintain their color for a really long time and then when they are done and they're ready to drop their leaves they do it all within it seems like a one week window so it's one cleanup instead of you know having to go out you know those trees that just kind of like spit leaves off here and there throughout the entire fall season um which you know i have some of those too and it is nice to have trees that hold a little bit of color some of the time but it's also nice to have trees that will just do it all at once so it's not a lingering like drawn out process to clean them up. And these red points are Acer rubrum, they're a red maple, and they have been bred, they combine the uh, good qualities from an Acer rubrum in that they're really well branched, they have really good color, really good form, um, but they also have the fast growing nature of an Acer freemani, or freemani, I'm not sure how you say that, um, which I've grown both types of maples, and I really like this one. It has a very dominant central leader, which creates a really easy to grow tree that has really good branching, like strong branching. Um, I've never had a structural issue with these trees, which is awesome. The only thing with maples that we deal with here really is chlorosis, um, and that's because of our soil pH. So I am gonna be putting iron tone in around these trees along with our biotone today as a preventative. Also, there's a lot of random yard work and equipment noises going on today. So I apologize for any loud noises that you may hear in the background. Yeah, look at that. Imagine us having this all nicely done with clean, fresh gravel and then creating a big old mess to get these planted. I think the timing's good, Aaron. Yeah. I'm glad that you wanted to do this beforehand. Do you want to stick some biotone in there first? Uh, sure. Before I fill it up with water? Mm -hmm. Also, can I put some, I'm going to put some iron tone in too. Okay. So yeah, let me give you a little tour of this area so you can kind of know what we're thinking. You can see where the road's been cut. So it's gonna go like up and meet our current driveway right now. And it goes around here 
and goes around our hydrant over there and then uh, it'll be gravel just a small lane along the fence line but then this whole section right here will be graveled where people will park um, where we may have trucks and trailers coming in here I think these trees are gonna look awesome I mean you can see the first one there it just instantly gives us space a facelift but this area there's a storm sewer there's our electricity you just really can't do much with this area other than just plant it lightly which i think will look good anyway again these poles will be gone as will much of the fence line here and all of this fence line will be gone as well so i've got a chanticleer pear which is the tall one there on the left then there's a instant karma elderberry that's doing amazing we've got an eastern redbud multi-trunk which will stay and then there's a Vanderwolf pine here, which we're gonna have to move because all of this right here, all of it's going away. And our driveway that comes this way will come straight out into the property and all of this driveway will be gone. But for the time being, the gravel, you can kind of see the stakes here. The gravel will just go up and meet our current driveway until we're ready to do this whole project, which is gonna be next year, I think. But I am looking forward to once the gravel's in, we're gonna remove the um, implement here and then I'll start planting. We'll amend the soil and get it planted up. Oop, Aaron's moving on to the other one. You're just prepping the holes. So we're adding biotone and iron tone to the holes and then filling them up with water. Yes, be generous. Ready to plant that one? Yeah, let's do it. Oh boy. I wonder how long this hole would hold that water. Yeah, I thought about, you know, what we should have done is tested it. Uh, just filled it up really last matters, night just yeah, to it'd see. Yeah, kind of fun to know. I mean, it does look like it's receding. You can see it moving. And it's already, it's already gone down about a half inch or so. We have a pretty good layer of hard pan out here. Um, so we're gonna have to do, just be really careful. I mean, I've been there. Our last garden was kind of like this, except for it was swampy and hard pan rather than dry and hard pan. Um, so anyway, yeah, it retains moisture for quite a long time. Which is doable as long as you know that in the beginning and you're not sure. drowning your plants. You have to use bolt cutters to get these out of their little cages. You just tell me what to do. Aaron's in charge of this project. <laughs> I'm just the hired hand here. I do think this is easier than having him in a big giant plant can. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh, look at that root ball. It's a beast. Well, it's like it's buoyant. We won't have to water it for a little bit. No, we'll be set. It looks good though, like on the fence post. That looks great. Good. Um, let me look at it from this angle. I think we may need to rotate it though, Aaron. Um, counterclockwise. It's buoyant, right? So it should be easy. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, right there. That's good. Like this? I do like that. Yeah. yeah it actually is not hard to turn. No, I think it looks really good right there. We have an arachnid presence on this tree trunk. I think there's a bunch of baby spiders in here. Gotta let this water settle and then pack it in. 
That's looking pretty good, Aaron. I know. <laughs> so we planted the root ball slightly up, um, knowing that we're gonna come in with a layer of gravel and it's always best to go slightly too high than too low. You don't wanna create like a well where water can collect, especially given the fact that our soil is pretty clay and doesn't drain very well. Uh, I think what we're gonna have to do because that water was still, I don't think the tree is really solid. Like you can yeah, rock we'll it pretty good. Back and... Yeah, we'll come back out and we'll pack it in. Probably in a couple hours, we'll come back and pack the soil as much as we can around that root ball. All right, on to the next. All righty. Give it a little bit of a push on the foot. Also floating. Yeah. That's okay. All right, the third one has been planted, so check this out. So let me stand back here, and you can see all three of them. Doesn't that look good? Aaron, this one looks like it's tipped a little bit. <laughs> it, it looks like it needs to be pulled like toward the southwest corner. Okay. Yeah, oh, I got it right. Yes, just like that. One more, there you go. The whole tree is a bit crooked. Can you like step on it on that side? Yeah, it's all muddy. Okay, that yeah, better? that's better. Do you know roughly how far apart these are spaced? Roughly, probably 24. I'm assuming these are about eight feet. Like from the, post to post? Yeah, so that would be 24. Okay, so they'll overlap by about three feet then, which is perfect because we want it to be a hedge, like a solid tree hedge. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? <gasps> we did it, we did it wrong. Aaron. <laughs> there's, there's Are you serious? Posts in between this and there's three posts in between that one. This is what happens when Aaron is in charge of a project. What are we going to do? So if there are four posts between the tree, then that means there's going to be 32 feet. So those two wouldn't touch. These two would overlap. We want them to this one could get moved over here. Looks like we're going to move a tree. Oh man. I want to know um, right now. I want to know how you feel. I feel pretty stupid. How did that happen? <laughs> it happens, trust me. Remember the hedge of roses I planted up front and the one is all willy-nilly off to the side? Except for this is a big tree, Aaron. This is a little bit bigger of a deal. Pulling that out is gonna be tough. Yeah. We might need a second set of hands for that. Yeah, it's a little bit of a stomach drop moment when you realize there are four posts, or three posts rather, between these two trees and only two posts between those two. <laughs> so we have a 24 foot spacing. The trees are 30 feet, so 15 foot from center. So they'll overlap by about three feet in the center. You know, Erin, we could take the middle one and just split the difference unless you want them on a post. Well, I would rather have more space over here by the opening. Sure. For traffic to get in and out. Uh-huh. So having a tree farther away from that is not a bad thing. Fine. Okay. All right. Let's aug. <sighs> <laughs> I like to give him sassafras for stuff like this, but in all honesty, this kind of stuff happens all the time. But usually the root ball is a lot smaller. It's not as big of a deal to dig it up. <laughs> so while Aaron is working on augging the new hole, I'm going to go ahead and set up the drip to both of these trees. So I've got solid quarter inch black poly tubing, two two gallon per hour emitters, and two tubing stakes. So I'm gonna attach the emitter first and the pointy side is gonna go into the black poly. So I'll put the red side into the quarter inch here. Then I pop it into the black poly. Run my tubing stake through and then just tack it down on one side of the root ball. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Easy peasy. Got that hole prepped. Now Aaron's digging this tree out. <laughs> oh. That actually took very little effort 
to get it out of the hole. And that's really encouraging to see that this hole wasn't bogged down with water. So I think, yeah. I think we won't have a, I don't know, a water issue to worry about. I wasn't so sure after we planted the first tree. <laughs> now we gotta fill that hole back up, dang. So really quick, we're gonna go mark where we want the fourth maple and then Aaron's gonna continue digging this hole out and possibly get the other tree planted while I go water because it's getting kind of late in the day and it's kind of hot and breezy. Um, so I think like stuff in the greenhouse will be suffering at this point. So we're gonna head to the far corner and show you where the fourth one's gonna go. So we were thinking of putting the maple kind of in this corner right here. The neighbors have a Corinthian linden planted. Those get 15 feet wide, so I'm thinking it'll just barely touch the fence. So if we have a maple over here that has a 30 foot spread, 15 foot on center, I'm thinking that it will just kind of maybe barely go over the fence right there. I think we would be good. Do you think it would neck it down too much in this corner or? No, I think it would be perfect. It'll, it'd be kind of a nice stay. tall kind of we'll center anchor. Corner, yeah. anchor yeah. Not centerpiece, anchor. Okay, I'm using a hose guide as my marker. I think that that's gonna work out the best. I don't believe cars will go any further than, I mean, this is a pretty good size curve here. So from about here, this whole space right here is empty and we can put the tree in and just a few shrubs, keep it very clean over here. I think that'd be nice. All right, I'm gonna go water if you wanna keep on, do you wanna trade or? Keep on keeping on? Yeah. No, actually, I'd rather do this. Okay.
All right, we've come out to survey Aaron's work. He finished up the project. It looks really clean. Did you get the tractor out? Yeah, I did. Nice. Kind of scraped the dirt just a little bit more tidy yeah. than it was. So you can see that this one was formally planted right here. So now we have proper spacing, which is very nice. Very nice. Did you hear that firework, buddy? Oh, look at those trees. Aren't they nice? Especially like just imagine them big. Nice shade, nice little barrier right there. Just an addition of something green and then the gravel will look really tidy as well. And honestly, one of the best parts of this project is that I didn't have to dig the holes, huh, Benjamin? Yeah, Daddy did it. So we're setting up drip quick on the very last maple, the one that was moved. Aaron had set up drip to it when it was here, but we had to abandon that. <laughs> You got, you got dirt in your shoe. Do you want to hang out in the gator, sweetie? Hey, do you want to see something kind of cool? Yeah. So, you know You don't how, need that, though. Yeah, but you know how you thought this was just for half inch? Yeah. Somebody commented and said this is also for three quarter. I guess this little blue piece right here. Oh, it comes out. Yeah, pop. Oh, pop goes the weasel. Anyway. Oh, my goodness. So now it does three quarter. Nice. Okay, now I got to find that piece. Well, that'll be easy. I was able to punch him in without that tool. Sure, but I just wanted to show you. Listen, I hear wheel wheel. You hear the wheel wheel? The sirens? On the sidewalk. Oh, yeah? On the sidewalk. On the sidewalk? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Here in the road, there's a piece Here, car. I'll do this one. I gotta get some, you brought the Falcos out, right? Yeah. Ta-da. All right, well, let's go check out the next one. Next one, hold on baby. Oh yeah, I think that tree's gonna look really good right there. I need to put like three Arctic fire dogwoods over there. Yeah. Or just something super chill. All right, let's check the level. <laughs> oh, it looks good. I mean, we've gotta kick this stuff around a little bit. Level it out. I'm assuming that was from the tractor. Holy moly, what is that that people are lighting off? Big firework. It's fun, Benjamin. Sounds like a cannon. Yeah. So what I was thinking is we could just probably run a quarter inch from here. From the arb line? Yeah, just straight over here. Yep, I think that's a great idea. Not like this? I think so. I think that's, I think that's good here. Do you want to hold this and I'll cut them? It smells like somebody's burning a fire somewhere. Yeah, it does. There. I like it. So my only other thought, Aaron, and I need your opinion, is whether or not we use landscape fabric, like we just continue it on um, from underneath the arbs. We typically don't use landscape fabric except for under broadleaf or evergreen hedges like our um, boxwoods and our arborvitas because we have bindweed so bad in our area. And if bindweed takes over and crawls up in your hedges, there's no way you can spray it without killing your plants. And there's no way you can eradicate it because you can't pull it. It'll just keep on growing growing and spreading and it's just a nightmare and landscape fabric is really the only way I have found to really control it and that's kind of what I'm thinking for this corner area because there's so much bindweed let me show you there's actually some right here see right there this is bindweed it is the most horrible weed that and puncture vine and you know what? it's really thick in here they just scraped all this area in preparation for the gravel so it's there and it will come back I'm just thinking in this planting area, since I know we're not going to be planting anything that needs to naturalize, like perennials of any kind, it'll just be a handful of shrubs. Yeah. It might be easier. Do, uh, we should do hydrangeas. What kind? I don't know. Something, well, probably a paniculata. Yeah, that's for sure. That's about all that can handle our full sun. Well, some arborescents can. Yeah, that's true. The Incredibles have been doing really, really well. But they have, a, they have a tree on one side and a tree on the other side. And I think that helps. They just get like that. That's true. Just like a few hours of afternoon sun. So maybe. To get blooms. Maybe like a, well, we did a firelight hedge. Quick fire. 
yeah, something. So you'll most likely be seeing a video when we decide to tackle this area, when we get our hands on the plants that we want. Um, then you can kind of see what we do with this raw space. And this one will look a little bit different than the rest of our garden in that we're keeping it very simple because this spot is tucked back in the corner and it's very soon, like this whole area is gonna be developed with the cut flower garden. There's gonna be a structure and fruit trees. You won't really see this corner. We still want it to look nice and tidy and pretty, but it won't be overflowing with stuff. And I think the only other thing I didn't mention was the red point maple is a zone five. Um, and I believe it's a zone five through eight, maybe nine. I see conflicting information on the internet. I would say safely a zone five through eight might be pushing it in a zone nine, but I just know they have done so well for us here. They've done well in our garden here. They did well for us at our last garden where we had a really high water table. So I am just a believer in this tree. I just really like them. I think we're done. I say we're done like I was a big part of the project. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. You are done. Holes. Yes, you did a good job. I really like it a lot. So that's going to be it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing this next step on our new property. It feels good every time we put something new in the ground or we do something, whether it's cleaning up something or whatever. It just feels good. It feels like yeah. we're one step closer to our vision of what we want it to look like in the end, which is a very loose vision. It changes very quickly. So anyway, thanks guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.